So suppose we have some non-homogeneous PDE. How are we going to solve it? Well, uh, we begin by first looking at the, the homogeneous version. And we, using separation of variables, we discover, say, that the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions are given by, by some formulas, right? Um, then what we do is we assume that the solution to our non-homogeneous equation has some expansion in terms of those eigenfunctions here, where now these, um, these coefficient functions right here are unknown. And I guess it's actually redundant. I don't need to have the CNs there because they can be uh, incorporated in the, in the GNs. There we go. So some summation that looks like this. Um, then what we do is uh, substitute this expansion into the uh, PDE. So in other words, um, we, we uh, stick that into LU equals F, and then that will set up an equation on the GNs. And so this is, uh, this is a sort of a meta technique that's used a lot in various different areas of mathematics, especially in differential equations, but also in functional analysis and other places where um, there's a thing you want to find. So a function or an operator or something. You make a general um, assumption about the shape of its, like its form, and then you plug that into whatever equation it's supposed to satisfy. And that equation ends up telling you what the specifics are about that general form. So an example of this is looking for power series solutions. You assume for, you know, you're solving a differential equation. You assume that your differential equation solves a power, uh, you know, has, has a power series form. So you think, okay, so u looks like a n x to the n. And then you substitute that into your ODE. And then out of that, it gives you some formula for the ANs that you can then solve. And then once you've solved those, uh, you know what those ingredients in your original uh, form were. And you can write down a specific uh, example. Um, so this kind of thing comes up all the time. Uh, if, like I said, if, uh, for, for non-self-adjoint operators, maybe you want to find what the adjoint of a given operator is. So you can do the same kind of technique there. Uh, so on and so forth. So I guess uh, the method of undetermined coefficients um, for, for finding non-homogeneous solutions in uh, uh, ODE class is uh, another example of this. So let's see. So um, let's look at a particular example. So suppose we've got ut minus ku xx equals uh, f. And we'll work on the interval from 0 to pi with t positive, and um, we'll take u at 0 and u at pi to be 0. So we have homogeneous Dirichlet conditions. And we'll take a 0 initial condition, too, just to keep it uh, simple. Then let's see. So from this problem, we know uh, from, from past analysis that the eigenvalues are going to be n squared, and that they have corresponding eigenfunctions that look like uh, sine nx. Um, so then we make an assumption uh, for this problem that the unknown function, the state variable that we're looking for, uh, can be written as the sum n equals 1 to infinity of some mysterious GNT functions times sine nx. OK. And then we will also assume, or well, we won't assume, but we will uh, take a Fourier sine decomposition of, of our function f. So there's going to be some FNTs here and the same uh, eigenfunctions here. So what we have right here is, is an eigenfunction expansion 
of the source term. All right, so now we uh, substitute into the, the given PDE that we had. And so if we take the form for u and we take its time derivative for the first part, well, assuming that we can differentiate term by term, then this is going to be uh, gn prime t, and the ddt will ignore the sign part. Good old separation of variables coming to our assistance. Um, and then we have minus k times the second derivative with respect to uh, the spatial variable. So that's going to ignore gn t, leave it right there. Um, and then that would kick out a minus n squared sine nx. <coughs> Um, and then we will have uh, on the other side FNT sine NX. And it's important to um, point out here that the, uh, the, the F's are known, right? So this, the F's are part of the, this is, this is a given data. Um, so we can find those uh, those FNs. So collecting this all together then, we have that the summation n equals 1 to infinity of, and then we've got uh, gn prime sine nx. Actually, let me leave off the sine. Uh, minus or plus kn squared gn t minus fn t sine nx is equal to zero. But we know the signs are linearly independent uh, because they're all uh, mutually orthogonal. So that allows us to extract the equation, and let me leave off the, the t's, um, gn prime plus kn squared gn equals uh, fn. All right. And so now uh, this can actually just be solved as a first order linear ODE with an integrating factor. So if we multiply across by the integrating factor of e to the uh, n squared kt, um, then let's see, on the left side, we end up with e to the n squared kt g quantity prime equaling e to the n squared kt f. And then we can go ahead and integrate both of those and et cetera, et cetera, the usual techniques give us that um, GNT is going to be the integral from zero to T of E to the minus N squared T minus tau F N of tau D tau. Um, oh, sorry, I, I skipped a step there. Whoop. So this is going to be uh, gn of 0 uh, plus this guy. OK. Um, so now we can figure out what the gn of zeros are by looking at the initial conditions, because we are given uh, initial condition of 0 for this guy. And we know that that's gn of 0 sine nx. And so then that tells us that the gn0 term is going to vanish uh, for each n. And so we just end up with gnt as the integral from 0 to t e to the minus n squared t minus tau fn tau d tau. Um, and then that can be punched back into our formula for u. And so our coefficient looks like this integral
and there we have it that's our solution <laughs>